Being competitive year after year should be among the top priorities for every team in the NBA. However, few organizations are capable of doing this. Still, in some cases, a few organizations will surprise the world with their performance despite seemingly having everything working against them. Among those teams, the Oklahoma City Thunder stands out for its consistency over the last decade. Despite being a relatively young franchise, the team has managed to go against all odds by making smart moves that have allowed it to keep winning most of its games. However, after a season in which they went far beyond expectations, everything seems to indicate the franchise is ready to start building a new era of basketball. And after a long search, it has found the man it wants to be the leader of that new era, Coach Mark Dagnall. But who is he? Where does he come from? And how can he help rebuild the Thunder? Welcome to Courtside. Today, we're taking a look at OKC's current situation, Dagnall's coaching career, and why the team believes he's the right person to guide the team going forward. After Oklahoma City announced it had reached an agreement with Billy Donovan to part ways following the conclusion of the coach's contract, the team immediately started to search for his replacement. And after two months, it finally found one, though it wasn't necessarily a household name. Mark Dagnall was presented as the fourth head coach in Thunder history on November 11th, and if you hadn't heard too much about him before, it's because this will be his first job as a head coach in the NBA. That way, he joined Steve Nash, Nate Jorkin, and Steven Silas as part of the group of rookie coaches that will make their debut next season. However, that doesn't mean he lacks experience guiding a basketball team. Mark started his coaching career immediately after earning his bachelor's degree in 2007 and remained at the coaching college level before getting closer to the NBA in 2014. That year, he was hired as the first head coach of the Oklahoma City Blue, the Thunder's G League affiliate, starting what would be a five-year tenure guiding the team. During that period, he became the winningest coach in franchise history, while also leading the Blue to its two most successful seasons. His effort in the G League helped him earn a promotion in 2019 when he became part of Donovan's staff as an assistant coach. That way, he helped the Thunder become one of the most pleasant surprises of last season as they were able to perform way better than what most people expected and came a three-pointer away from making it to the second round of the playoffs. So, given his experience, winning record, and previous knowledge of the team, he became one of the best options to succeed Donovan once he decided to look for a chance to coach somewhere else. But what are the exact things that helped him convince the team he was the right candidate to become its next head coach? In Sam Presti's words, Dagnall has an unusual combination of age, experience, and an ability to create connections with people that make him an ideal leader for the Thunder. At 35 years old, he becomes the second youngest head coach in the NBA, but still his age doesn't take anything away from him. His six seasons as part of the G League and NBA have helped prove three things. He can help his team win, he can help his players get better, and he can adapt to changes on the fly. His approach to coaching is inspired by his studies in education, and that helps him relate to his players and find ways to help them improve. He's known for empowering people and making everyone involved, which in turn helps him connect with those who surround him. Then, coming from the G League, he's also had to learn how to make adjustments quickly. In the minor league, it's common for players to be traded, called to the NBA, or suddenly sign a contract with a foreign team. In other words, rosters are usually on constant change year after year. And while most NBA rosters usually count with more stability, the Thunder is currently in a position where it could also see multiple changes coming in the short term. In fact, while Mark has already reached out to his new players, there's no way of knowing who he'll be coaching once next season gets going. We can assume Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Darius Basley, and Lou Gwentz Dort will be back considering they're all at or under 22 and have shown glimpses of the players they could be in a few years, especially Shea who already looks like one of the most promising young guards in the league. However, it's hard to predict who else will be wearing a Thunder jersey by next season. Andre Robertson, Danilo Gallinari, Nerlens Noller are all free agents who the team could let go. Dennis Schroeder and Steven Adams will both enter the final year of their respective contracts and could garner interest from other teams in trade talks. And then, of course, there's Chris Paul. Last summer, the point guard was acquired as part of a package that sent Russell Westbrook to Houston, but after the team found it couldn't move him somewhere else, it decided to make the most out of him until a good offer came by. At the moment, most people believe the Thunder would be close to the bottom of the Western Conference. However, Paul made sure that that wasn't the case. The point guard had an excellent season that helped him regain his status as a star while also leading the team to the fifth seed and last minute of Game 7 against the Rockets. His performance and the way he was able to raise the team increased his value and turned him into one of the most sought-after players in the trade market. And while OKC could still decide to run things back for another season, the departure of Donovan and the hiring of Mark, as well as the high interest Paul has garnered from multiple teams, seemed to indicate otherwise. So unless something unexpected takes place in the coming weeks, we should expect to see CP3 with a different team next season, while the Thunder should receive a package that includes a mix of young players, future draft picks, or veterans on short-term deals. And even though that may not sound exciting, it should be something good for the team. While OKC managed to make a playoff appearance and almost reached the second round, the truth is that management was expecting to start a rebuild last season. And that was evident as soon as Russell Westbrook and Paul George were traded away, and it was also a reasonable thing to do considering the team had been unable to make it out of the first round for three straight seasons. 
But even though the team was able to benefit a lot from last season's results, it's safe to say the best would be to commit to building the roster from the ground up. If the Thunder can't get past the first round of the playoffs and can't acquire any other superstars either, the best would be to acquire assets to build for the future. The front office knows that, and that's the reason why the franchise acquired an immense haul of future draft picks. That way, it'll be able to add young players to the roster that can grow along with Shea. We shouldn't expect it to repeat what it did between 2007 and 2009, though. During those years, Oklahoma City was able to acquire Kevin Durant, James Harden, Serge Ibaka, and Westbrook through the draft. But even while we know Presti is excellent at building a roster, it's hard to imagine the team being able to repeat such a feat. Still, with more than 10 future draft picks, the team should be able to add some intriguing pieces. If things work out well, it could return to playoff contention in a few years. And that's where Dagnol will play a key role. It won't matter how many talented players the Thunder is capable of adding to its roster if it doesn't count with a coach that can push those players and put them in a position where they can become the best version of themselves. But the team believes Mark is the right person to do that, and they already let him know the plan is to build for the future. According to the coach, Presti and his team never talked about a quick turnaround for them, nor about producing wins immediately. And that's a good sign. It says a lot about the team's culture. We've seen how other organizations have tried to rush things in the past and the poor results that such moves have produced. But the Thunder have never been that kind of team under Presti's leadership. While other franchises have become known for their instability and for hiring a new coach every two years, OKC has preached patience and continuity over time. Donovan coached for five seasons before deciding to leave, and before him, Scott Brooks guided the team for seven years. So it's safe to say we'll see Dagnall with the team for a few more seasons. And considering he's already been around for six years, the transition should go smoothly with him on the sidelines. But the biggest challenge will take place a few weeks away from now. His hiring comes only a few days before draft night and the start of free agency. In other words, he'll have little time to prepare for the moves that are about to come. And then immediately after that, he'll need to get his players ready for a training camp that may come earlier than most people expected. So with a roster that could look very different in a few weeks and with almost no time to prepare for the upcoming season, Mark is going to face an uphill battle from day one. However, if he's able to adjust as good as he did during his time in the G League and establish a connection with his new players, the Thunder should be an intriguing team next season, even if it doesn't win too many games. All in all, Dagnall could have the most challenging season among rookie coaches next year. While Nash, Silas, and Jorkin will take the lead of teams that are already in playoff position and count each with a couple of established stars, Mark will have to get the most out of a roster that may be very far from a finished product. And while he won't be facing the pressure to win immediately, he will be asked with identifying and developing the next star that should lead the franchise along with Shea for years to come, something that could be very challenging in itself. But if we've learned something about the Thunder, it's that it always seems to find a way to get a star player. So it could be a matter of time before it's back on top of the West. But now, what are your thoughts about the future of Oklahoma City? Do you believe they'll be able to build another impressive core as they did in the late 2000s? Let us know in the comments. We hope you've enjoyed today's video, and if you did, remember to like it and subscribe to our channel for more NBA content. We are Courtside.